everyone welcome back to a new abandoned video and today we are revisiting an iconic location right behind me here is the abandoned microwave towers that I filmed back in 2017 this is a really cool location situated on top of a mountain I did a video here covering the history and details about what these were used for and when they were actually in use so of course if you want to see that video it will be linked down below in the description if I could talk it's really cold out today uh, but today we're gonna to do a revisit I'm not alone though, I did bring Mike from Out Naturing. He's doing a video for his channel. You can also find his link down below as well. Basically though, these were constructed. They're called microwave relay towers to transport phone and TV signals. They were worked by line of sight, so they went from tower to tower and made, eventually made it to the station. This one here was constructed sometime around 1960 and was last used in the early 1990s. And it's been sitting here abandoned ever since. So we're gonna take a walk around, show you what it looks like today. The building, though, is gutted of all of its contents and equipment, but it's still a really cool place to see. And we're going to check it out to see how it looks. You know, it'll be his first time, too, so I'm kind of curious to see what he thinks about it. But if you want to check it out with me, come along with me. All right, so we're going to take a walk around now. The main entrance is on the other side of the building. But without any surprise, this building is in worse condition. And people have been partying up here, almost setting fires to it. But nonetheless, it is a really cool place. And those big objects are called horns. They are what are used to send and receive the transmissions. Now, once we check out the building, I will show you some of the incredible views from up here because we are, as I said, situated on top of a mountain. It is kind of a really great location. And off in the distance, if you could see, peeking through the trees right there is actually another little abandoned substation there too, which we'll check on the way out of here. But this is it. And Mike is over there doing his intro. Now back up until around 2015, all the equipment was left inside here. All the transmission equipment, electronics. But they have been gutted, and now it's just a tagged up gutted building. You want to see the inside? Let's go check it out. It is a mess in here. So let me get inside and I'll take you for a grand tour. All right, I'm gonna to switch to main camera here and show you this place is beyond trashed. It's actually in worse condition, much worse condition than when I was last year. And it appears they've tried to set multiple fires in here. It's just ridiculous that people do this. Now the building though is a very structurally sound building. These are built to last, built to survive, you know, blast from military, natural disasters, stuff like that. So the building's not going anywhere anytime soon. But last time I was here, there's actually some remnants of the equipment here. There was stuff here with some labeling on it. Which, yeah, it's been removed or stripped or whatever. It had something about I think antennas and there was a furnace room but I don't see it
but all the walls are just covered in soot from fire. That's not spray paint, that is soot. Fortunately, some vulgar graffiti. But again, at one time, when this is operational, it'll be filled with electronics. Looks like somebody's maybe trying to stage something here with this rope. You can see the, looks like the heat ducts up there, possibly. Yeah, it looks like something is missing here. There was a room with a furnace I remember seeing in the last video. I don't know where that's at right now. Here's a, what is that? I think that's a light fixture. Fluorescent lighting. That's just a vent window to the outside. So unfortunately, not much to see even less than last time. But I'm perplexed though, because there wasn't another room with a furnace. I actually had, I think a furnace was still inside of it. So I wonder if maybe someone deconstructed the walls and took the furnace. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was over here somewhere. There's like a ventilation unit, a fan. I'm pretty sure there was a little room right here. But either that or I had dementia. I don't know. <laughs> but the coolest part, though, is still to see outside around back to get up close and personal with those towers, those horns. So unfortunately, not much else to see in here. So let's head outside and we'll get an exterior look at the building, the rest of the building and the microwave tower. So Mike was over here getting some shots and he actually said, there's something really neat over here I wanna see. And I almost doubted him at first. But let's see what actually it is. Well, coming over here, I wanted to show the view of the mountain. Wow. It's actually a, an abandoned SUV. I never knew this was here. It's actually pretty well hidden. Summertime, you never see it. It's a Ford Explorer. Early 2000s model. Jeez. Let's get a better look at that. I can only imagine the stories as to why this is here. If someone dumped it, if it's stolen, if it was used in a police chase. Lots of possibilities. Tires are still inflated. It actually hasn't been here all that long, maybe a couple months at the most. Back, the windows aren't even blown out of it yet. Stand back here. The tire iron in the back. Bunch of loose chains on the carpet. <laughs> That's just insane that this is here and not. It's not the windows aren't even busted out either. That's shocking. Like someone tagged it, obviously. I think this was tagged before it was brought here because the trees are right against it. None of the trees are covered in paint. Yeah, there's like a flames on the side of it. What is that? They brought a giant right through here. Are there tracks? Like tire, fresh tire tracks? All right, so as to whether it's accurate or true or not, there is a sign on the window here. It says, broken down off-road vehicle, we will return. And they actually covered up the VIN number too. Okay. In front of the car. Remove the license plate. It's a beautiful cardboard bumper. Time. So tell me your thoughts. Do you guys think this is an abandoned vehicle? Do you think it was stashed here? Or do you think that sign is legit that they're going to return? 
I don't think they would go that far to put it back here. They have it be broken down in that spot because they had to back the vehicle into here. It didn't break down here unless they were parked here to do something illegal. But that is quite the find. So good job to Mike. All right, so now we got the little fun detour out of the way. Let's go check out the towers. So like I always do, I'm gonna walk up to the tower here and give you a good size comparison to myself compared to that. So you see an overall perspective of how gigantic these are. Now these are climbable. I've seen videos of people climbing these. And as far as I know, it's pretty intact. They're built to last. There is a ladder here, but I am not good with heights like this. And it's all see-through. And it's just downright not a fun time for me. So I did fly my drone around though in my first video. So I do get some aerial shots and be able to show you what it looks like from up there in the first video. But it is really cool to know though that you know these are AT&T long line towers used to transmit phone and television. That is how you were able to make landline phone calls and watch cable television based off of this in the 60s through the 90s. Technology sure has come a long way, especially with what I'm doing now. Making a video on my phone, live streaming mobily. So despite the change of the times, some things have changed for the better. There's a nice overall shot from here, different angle. This is, again, a very cool location. It's on top of a mountain. As far as I know, you're allowed to be here. It is a public access road. It's not posted. There's no gates that you have to cross over. And as you can see, the building has the open door policy or open window, if you want to call it that. The one key difference you may notice in this video too, compared to my first one, is that I'm actually talking. I'm interacting with you guys, giving you my thoughts. Even though I'm not super knowledgeable or the most over entertaining guy, I'm at least able to tell you what I think about what I see at this place compared to my first video where I was basically just using subtitles and showing you everything through the camera itself. So hopefully if you guys do appreciate this type of format better, I'm able to talk to you about what I see, talk about what I'm going to do next, and make you feel like you're here with me. If you do enjoy it better, let me know in the comments section. And don't forget also to give the video a big thumbs up. It's free, only takes a second and tells me that you enjoy this type of content. So just spoke with Mike and he said he thinks he's gonna get some gloves on and pack up his gimbal and try to make his way up there. So if he does, we'll continue with that footage next. If not, we'll be wrapping up shortly after this. Okay, so now that we checked out the uh, building and the towers, we're gonna take a walk in the opposite direction and show you the incredible view from the top of the mountain here. 
got a short walk, maybe about five minutes worth, and then you'll be able to see what we could see from up here, which is simply breathtaking. After that, excuse me, we are going to make our way to that little substation with that little tower there. I never checked that out the first time I was here. I just drove by it. So on our way out, we will stop and take a quick peek at that. But Mike did not go to the top, though. For smart reasoning, it is really windy today. It's really cold. And the main ladder that goes to the top, the first section of it is not securely fastened. It was really loose and wobbly. And he didn't feel comfortable doing it. I didn't feel comfortable with him doing it. And I sure as heck wasn't going to do it. So maybe in a future time, in the summertime, if we could come, he said maybe if he could get some kind of a harness where he could attach himself as he makes his way up to the top. But either way, it's still a pretty cool place to see from the ground. But let's flip the camera around and we'll take a look at the views from up here. You can see this is a uh, pretty frequently used trail. But we're coming to a clearing here, which is probably a pretty good lookout spot or party spot. They do see signs of fires and stuff. I'm going to keep this rolling though. Wait till you see this view. Camera's not going to do it justice, but I still had to share it with you guys. That is probably the best view here in the city of Scranton. And we are looking straight across. I'm gonna show you wide angle first, then I will zoom it in. That is Montage Mountain, those white strips. That's the ski slopes. Looking down there, I think there's a big cemetery there, just at the base of the mountain. As we pan over, we see parts of, different parts of Scranton, but it is, Amazing. We're pretty much almost eye level with Montage Mountain, which is a ski resort, obviously on top of a mountain, and we're almost the same height as that right now. So that gives you a pretty good perspective as to how high in elevation we are. I am going to zoom in now and do my best to show you the same view again. You can see things a lot more clearer now. I'm using the uh, Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal, so it's keeping it pretty smooth as I pan across, zoomed in. really windy here too I'm kind of freeze my butt off but it's worth it to share this with you pretty amazing I'm gonna snap a few photos here too pretty cool huh and here's looking back there's the towers in the distance there with the trees There's the towers there behind the trees. And it is so windy and cold up here. I'm not gonna stay here much longer, but again, just wanted to give you the full experience as we're up here. I don't think you can still hear me because the wind is whipping right now. You can probably see it in the grass here. And of course, right when I pan down, the wind dies down. There you can see the leaves rippling in the wind. All right, that's enough of the cold here and the wind. Let's get back, make our way to that last little substation, which is probably not even called a substation, but I'm calling it that. And then we'll wrap things up in there.
So a little update. You may have seen some footage just now, some guys walking away from that truck. Well, they went back there. And if you remember what's back there, that's that abandoned Ford Explorer. I legitimately thought that was stashed there, but I believe they came to get it. They have an air compressor in the back of the truck and some tools, and there's three guys. And uh, I was right though, it wasn't there very long, but they are, I think, gonna try and retrieve it. So funny coincidence, Mike spots it. We assume it's an abandoned vehicle and there's uh, people up here to get it. So pretty funny turn of events. Yeah, I'm sitting in the car right now. It's those three guys right there. So, unless they're, there's a small, small chance it's not their vehicle, but they know it's here. But I have a pretty safe assumption they probably are the ones that left it there. I just don't know why, though. All right, see you. <laughs> they can't see me here through my tinted windows. But it's funny because I was down there filming the view area. Snapping some photos, I heard a vehicle come in pretty fast. I heard the crunching of the ice, heard the engine. Didn't know what to expect, so I came rushing back to my car, and that's what we found. This means they're not coming to get it today. Maybe they're checking on it. I don't know. Still doesn't add up as to why it's left back there. It was definitely parked back there intentionally. It was reversed there. They couldn't drive into it forward. But they took the plate off, hid the VIN number, locked it up, put that sign on the window, so who knows? So a scenario like that, just want to mention a couple things which will help solidify why they actually backed up for a moment. Uh, I just want to mention that why safety in numbers is extremely important, even for you know a place like this. Even though this is not an old abandoned house, you know that potentially someone could be waiting inside in an isolated location like this. You don't know what you're going to encounter. As always, I always have protection on me. I have. Right here, readily available pepper spray. I have a knife, amongst other things, either in my vehicle or in my backpack or on me. So I never come without protection. Mike has his own. But just being here together, though, you know, if there's just one of us up here, there's a chance anything could happen much greater than if you're here with someone else. So they saw there was two of us here. We we're not alone. And not to say that they're up to no good. I don't want anything to worst of people. But they did come directly for that vehicle. So... We don't know the the, sto the story, the story behind it, or the thoughts about it. But I do know that they did come up here intentionally to check on their vehicle, if it is indeed theirs. So, with that out of the way, I just want to stress, you know, safety, common sense, and using your best judgment are crucial things when doing any type of adventures or exploring. All right, so we are departing the Long Line Station up here, and we're going to make a little pit stop at that little substation area that we passed on the way in. Now let's see if the uh, Billy Bobs are up here still with their pickup truck. <laughs> A lot of ice and puddles up here. You definitely need all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive to navigate. All right, here we are. This is another little abandoned station here. Considerably smaller, less impressive than the other one. And I don't know if this was tied into that. Maybe a receiver, repeater, amplifier. But while we're here, let's check it out. This one, definitely in better shape though. Oh, Mike, you're going to flip. QT. Shut up. 
Mike sees that everywhere we go. Looks like somebody's been having a little shelter in here. There's a gas line, probably was a furnace in here at some point. But cinder block, electrical station there. Okay guys, here we are inside. QT has been here. Been here more than once. Yeah, he's been here. This guy's been a lot of places that we've been to. Believe it. Most recent, May of 2019. Yeah, we're here 10, 11, 18. I will find you, Judy. <laughs> My goal is to find this person, guys. Anybody has any information? Yes, this building, much smaller, much less impressive, but in better shape, though. No fires inside, really. No soot. Much more intact. Although it's gutted, of course, but. It is in a definitely better shape. And it's got this little, looks almost like drums up there. Round horns. Again, I don't know if this is a receiver, amplifier, a booster, whatever it is. I don't know how they work, but I'm sure some of you out there could probably explain. And then right next to it, we do have the modern towers. The one on the left there is cell phone network. And the right one is something similar to what we're looking at here, those drums. Mike's gonna go check him out. So while he's doing that, we'll take a quick peek around the back of the building, make sure there's nothing back here that we're missing. Looks like on the ground here, parts of a uh, chimney maybe? Not sure what that is. It's like some kind of a ceramic or something. I think that's for a chimney. Probably for the furnace, maybe. So that was our revisited update look here at the AT&T Longline Towers, better known as microwave relays, up here on top of the mountain here near Scranton. This is still a really cool location, despite there not being much to see here. I'm glad I was able to come back and give you an updated look and to share my thoughts with you this time. Even though I was not able to show you anything more positive it was just cool to see though that it still exists but definitely in much worse shape you tell it's been hit by vandals even more partying fires so on and so forth that's a lot of the reasons why i don't give away certain locations because i don't want to see that happen even though these places are abandoned and decayed i do my best to help preserve them so that they don't get ripped down burned down sooner than they actually need to be so if you have any thoughts you're able to share you're welcome to share them down below i do appreciate your feedback and comments Love hearing what you guys think as well about the videos I do make for you guys. Remember, down in the description, you'll find a link to Mike's channel where you can see his perspective on this adventure, as well as my first video where I do drone footage and share a whole bunch of more details about how these whole microwave relays work. But with that said, I do want to thank you so much for watching today. If you did enjoy this adventure, please give it a thumbs up. I had a great time making it for you guys. If you'd like to help support my channel, you can pick up sweatshirts just like this one. I found a toy. It's officially abandoned. We did find a toy in the way up here, though. We found a Tonka truck in the woods. So I guess we could classify it. That's pretty close enough to being abandoned here. Uh, lastly, I ask you to follow me on Facebook where I do share photos, details, and some videos that don't always make it to this YouTube channel. With that said, I want to thank you so much for watching today. Have a happy new year, and I'll see you in the next video.